Let us create a dreamy forest panorama using Photoshop for the editing. As always, you can follow along this editing tutorial by downloading the raw files from the link in the description of this video. And now let's begin. Before we can start with the fun stuff, we of course need to first merge the panoramic image. In fact, we are going to merge an HDR panoramic image. This means we are going to handle a lot of raw files here. So the first thing we want to do is to select all the raw images you can see down below. I already have merged the panorama here because it takes ages to do that in the camera raw editor. So just so you know. With all the images selected, you want to right click on one of them and choose Merge to HDR Panorama. Be prepared to wait for a few minutes. You will end up with a preview window that looks like this. Here you do have a bunch of different options. You could change the projection, which does affect the panoramic outcome. So that's really up to your liking. You could also use the boundary warp tool to fill the edges. But the problem using Boundary Warp is we will get a skewed horizon, which doesn't look good. So I'm not going to use it. You could also apply auto settings, but I really don't like using that. Instead, what I want to do next is I want to just hit the Merge button. And after hitting the Merge button, be prepared to wait for a few minutes. And we will end up with something like this. The very first thing I want to do is to crop the image. So I'm going to slightly rotate it and I'm going to take away a part from the right side and of course from the left side. I want the center of the image to be between those two trees so I'm going to further take away a part from the right like this and maybe add a bit back to the left. And let's also take away a part from the bottom and the top. Okay I think that looks great. Now with the merging process out of the way and the cropping done, we can finally start with the good stuff. So I'm not going to change the profile because I think the colors do look quite good. Although it's always very hard to deal with green forest scenes like this in my opinion. So let's open up the lights tab where we can find the exposure adjustments. This scene is very, very tricky to edit, even when using an HDR panorama. So overall, this scene is a little bit too dark, although the highlights in the back are quite bright. So the first thing I want to do is to bring up the exposure, restoring details from the darkest areas. At the same time, to prevent the highlights from blowing out, I'm going to drop them all away. And then let's also raise the shadows a bit. This helps to create a very soft, basic look and that in turn helps to create the dreamy look we are aiming for. You could also raise the black slightly for an even dreamier effect. However, I want to have a little more contrast, so I'm not going to touch the black slider in here. Next up, I want to I wanna skip the color menu. I'm not going to touch the white balance because again, I like how the colors look in this image. I also don't want to add any extra vibrance or saturation for the base image. Instead, I want to head into the effects tab and I just want to slightly bump up the texture, making this whole shot a little sharper. Now for the basic adjustments, there is really not much going on, but there's a bit of masking involved. So that's where it, it's getting more interesting. Let's first work on the foreground. I'm using a linear gradient and I'm creating one with a rather sharp edge just above the wild garlic field right in the distance. And I want to raise the highlights and I also want to increase the clarity. Increasing the clarity really helps to make those wild garlic plants pop. Then I want to subtract using a brush from this linear gradient because we're also targeting the tree with the base linear gradient, which is not what we want. And I'm doing this on both sides just to get a little more quality out of this mask. Then let me use another linear gradient for the very bottom part, just like this. And I'm going to subtract a radial gradient just like that. And I'm going to use this linear gradient to add some kind of vignetting effect, making the bottom part of the image darker by simply bringing down the exposure. Okay, that looks good. I'm also going to drop the whites 
to further make this part darker, just like this. And I really like what this does to that white garlic field right here in the foreground. It makes it a little more interesting with a little more punch. Then let me target this blooming part of that, of that white garlic. I'm going to use a luminance range mask and I'm just clicking right in here. This nicely targets this wild garlic. We can filter out the midtones a little more by adjusting the luminance range mask like this. However, we also need to subtract a linear gradient covering the sky. So only really the plants in the foreground are affected by this mask. What I want to do here is I want to raise the whites and I also want to raise the blacks to make those blooming parts way brighter. Now let's add some glow. I'm going to use a radial gradient covering pretty much the center like this. And I am starting to add glow by increasing the exposure. I am also going to increase the whites. Let's increase the blacks. And I'm going to drop clarity and dehaze. So I don't want this glow effect over the whole image. That's the reason for me. I'm going to use a dedicated radial gradient for a very specific area of this forest, right there in the back of the distance, where we don't need as much detail as in the foreground. Again, using this radial gradient, we are, we are affecting a little more than necessary. So let's say subtract, choose the brush. And again, I'm just going to brush over this tree right here and on that tree over the other side. Done. Now let's further enhance that glow using a second radial gradient, this time a rather small one for the very bright spot right next to the tree. And I want this radial gradient to overlap the tree so we can create some kind of light spill effect so the light hits this side of the tree a bit. Here, let's bring up the blacks. To make this effect a little heavier, I'm going to bring down the dehaze a lot. Okay, that looks nice. I'm going to place a third radial gradient on top, make it a little bigger, and let's rotate it a bit. Again, place the center over the bright spot, and again, bring up the blacks. Wonderful. Finally, I want to add another radial gradient for the back part right around here. And I just want to add a little more brightness by bringing up the exposure. Just like that. Perfect. Now, here we have the HDR panorama after the masking adjustments, and you can see it's quite a difference from the base edit. Now we can start on the color grading. I'm going to head into the color mixer, and I want to work on the saturation. I do want to bring down the yellow saturation, because those yellow-greenish color tones always look a little bit weird and muddy if they are too overwhelming for an image, just like in this case. So I want to bring down yellow and I'm going to bring up the greens. That looks much better. Uh, we could also play around with the blue tones, but I guess there is not much blue going on in this scene. So let's not touch them. Okay. Now I'm going to skip over the color grading tab because I don't think it's needed for this image. What I want to do instead is I want to head into the calibration tab and I want to use the blue primary hue and saturation slider to enhance the color some more. Usually, I'm always dropping the blue primary hue. However, this makes the green tones look really, really strange. So instead of dropping the hue, I'm going to increase it. And this will give us some very fresh looking green color tones. And now let's also bring up the saturation a bit to add some color. Perfect. Now we're almost done with the raw adjustments. Just one more thing, and that's of course the sharpening in the details tab. And as always, I'm dropping the radius, I'm increasing the details, I'm adding masking by holding down the Alt key, and let's slightly bring up the sharpening. Done. So that is the image after the raw adjustments. We went from this basic raw file to this image, and now we can fine tune the editing with Photoshop. So let's open up this object. And the first thing that needs to be done is to make the foreground or the wild garlic in the foreground a little more interesting. I want to apply a bit of dodging here. So let me apply a new layer. And for the dodging, we want to use a luminosity mask. For that, I'm going to use a plugin called the TK panel. 
which is a paid plugin, but it makes things much, much easier and faster. And what I can do with this plugin is I can select a specific luminance range. For example, the lights to button will select the brighter areas of this image, just like you can see right now. And I want to specifically target those brighter parts of those green leaves in the foreground. So this is looking like a proper selection. Let's check the layer mask box right here and apply the lights to luminosity mask on our new layer down here. Now I don't want to select those bright white blooming parts. I'm going to deselect the layer mask mode and then let's choose another luminosity mask targeting those bright parts. I think lights free works quite good. With this one active, I'm going to hit a selection. And with the selection active, I'm choosing the layer mask, hit Shift F5, choose black as a filling color and hit OK. This way we are getting a nice selection only for the parts we want to dodge. So on that new layer, we need to now change the blending mode going from normal to overlay, grab the brush by pressing B and bring down the brush opacity a bit, set the foreground color to white. And now we can start painting over the foreground and do the dodging just like this and you can see this makes a huge huge difference i also want to further work on the dreamy look so let me create another new layer this time we're going to switch the blending mode to soft light again we are using the white brush but we are but we want to drop the opacity quite low to something around 12 percent maybe and with this white brush I'm going to paint in a few times right around the brightest spots of this image. Okay, that looks great. At this point, we could add some kind of autumn glow effect. Let us create a new layer out of all the three layers we have so far. I'm going to hit Control Alt Shift E to create a new layer out of these. Then let's go to Filter, Blur, and choose Gaussian Blur. I'm going with a radius around 30 pixels. I think that should be enough. Hit OK. And right away, go to the Edit menu, choose Fade Gaussian Blur. And here we want to change the mode from Normal to Lighten. And then let's bring down the opacity. I want this glow to be visible, so I'm not going to drop the opacity too low, but something around 25% looks nice. OK, again, we don't want to have this glow effect over the whole image. So create a layer mask. Actually, no, let's create a black layer mask. I'm holding down the Alt key and click the layer mask icon to do that. Then again, I'm grabbing the brush, set the foreground color to white, bring up the brush opacity. And now I'm just going to paint in this autumn glow effect on certain areas of this image. Basically right there in the center part. So this looks great. Now we could make the colors in the foreground a little more intense. I want to use an adjustment layer for that. Let's go into the adjustment layer menu and choose selective color. In the foreground, we do have mostly green color tones. So that's the color we want to change. In the colors dropdown menu, choose greens. Now, how can we make those color tones a little more intense? We can push the yellow slider, which in turn gives us some more intense green tones down here. So I think this looks quite good. We could even increase the cyan color tones a little bit to give us this fresh green look. Okay, great. Again, I don't want this adjustment layer to affect the whole image. So we are going to make use of that layer mask and basically fill the upper part with black. I'm using the gradient tool for that. You can see it's going from black to transparent. And I'm going to drag the gradient down like this. So only the bottom part is affected by this adjustment layer. At this point, I'm quite happy with how this forest image is looking. So I hope this editing tutorial was interesting and helpful. I wanted to do something a little more advanced since I have been doing a lot of Lightroom videos lately. So let me know what you think about that. Should I be doing more Photoshop videos like this in the future? I'm looking forward for your comments and thank you so much for watching this video.